Jonathan Dumas, what's up, man? Hi, how's it going, Joe? How are you? Nice to meet you. How you doing today? Oh, good, good, good. Had a good, uh, good workout this morning. Had some food. I'm ready to go. Yeah, All how right, are you? Man. Where are you? Where are you coming out of? Uh, L.A. All right, right on. Cool. Yeah, I'm in Kansas yeah. City. Oh, sweet, 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 sweet. Haven't had a chance to be there, get out that way yet, but I'm definitely going to get there. Got to get well, some barbecue. We're we're, we're, I feel like we're turning into L.A. with this whole Kelsey Swift thing. Oh, yeah. Man alive. <laughs> I didn't believe it for a while because I'm like, did she just uh like end a relationship not too long ago with some other guy? But I don't I don't know. I'm I'm not a Swifty. I don't keep up with that at all. I don't either. But yeah. that's what that's what we know, and we get five to ten percent of everything. So the other eighty to ninety percent's floating around in the ether. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. No, that's so funny. How are you doing? I'm good, man. What's that album back there on the wall? Which one? Oh, this one. Yeah, it actually is. Um. It's called, hold on just one second. This one's Erica Badu right up at the top. Okay, um, cool. That's Erica Badu. And then this one right here is actually it's the lyrics to um my uh Why I Love You by Major. That okay. was a song me and my wife danced to on my okay. first dance when we got married. Yeah, she gave that to me for our five year anniversary. Right so, on. Yeah. yeah. My, my wife gave me one too that had a song on it that that was an album so yeah 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 cool yeah i love it it's uh, she got it for me before i got it for her because i've been looking at that for the last couple of years <laughs> yeah <laughs> so funny yeah so funny so it's a great gift man mm -hmm. um well hey man it's great to meet you i'm looking forward to diving into your world but before we get into that i want to deal with what we've we've gone through for the last three and a half years which is COVID. how did you yeah. get through the pandemic and how has it changed you now that we're kind of in this post-pandemic era Gosh, um, that's, it's changed me a lot. I think, um, as far as just like personally, I think just I'm, I'm black, um, for those that you don't know. And I think experiencing 2020, um, it was already a lot of things that I already knew, but I think to have nothing else to do, like I wasn't working as much, like I wasn't doing anything. And so it was really like me, like talking to other people that are like they're just now realizing this um and to be quite frank a lot of white people that are just now realizing like all these things and seeing these things for the first time so um it was really interesting to have like that introspective kind of navigation of self um and the world around me and like actually who is my friends and different things like that um i've learned about myself that i'm not as extroverted as i thought i'm definitely an introvert <laughs> um i enjoy being home um i enjoy my time to think time to reflect time to be with my loved ones um, and be with the people that really care about me. And I think I have grown so significantly in my own like confidence about like what I bring to the world, what I bring to the table, what I bring to relationships um, in that self-reflection and not trying to be anybody that, you know, um, that nobody asked me to be. I'm just like, I'm just Jonathan, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that that has just been truly a gift to kind of like navigate and, and uh, do that with. And, you know, I made a lot of changes. Uh, me and my wife moved. Um, from an environment that wasn't too healthy for me and everything like that. So yeah, a lot of like solid changes, but it's definitely like reworked the way I see the world, the way I uh, go about the world, the way I interact with people, not in a negative way, but, um, but honestly, there's sometimes where you just gotta, you just gotta, some people just aren't for you, not, they don't have to yeah. be in your, in your life, you know? Yeah. So I yeah, dig it. So it's been good. Well, yeah. and I think we all went through that introspection, you know, and like you said, with George Floyd and everything that happened over that time, it was as though America was already a car teetering on the edge in some weird action movie. I mean, yeah. nothing was solid, you know, and yep. and it was just bound to blow up at some point. And absolutely, you you absolutely. lock everybody up for that long, and then you add fire to it, and you add mm -hmm. what we're already thinking about, and boom, there you go. You got to. I mean, I think hopefully we all have figured out, okay, that we mm -hmm. need to take care of each other. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whether it's a different a person that's different from you or yeah. it's somebody that's going through a mental health issue. Hopefully yeah. we have a the, the microscope is on the right things now and we're taking care of each other. And that's what you're doing. You're helping yeah. people. Have you seen an uptick in your business? Yeah. Yeah. I think there is definitely been um, just a shift in how folks are like even examining work. I mentioned how. Um, a lot of things have shifted, a lot of introspection, and folks have had time to think, have time to reflect on like, is this the job that I really actually want to do? Um, is this the work that I really want to do? 
Um, I was told, uh, being a millennial, told that, you know, go to college, get a good degree, you'll get a job and you'll be fine. Um, that is not the experience of millennials. <laughs> um, some some of us are, are getting great jobs and making a good amount of money, but they're we're miserable, right? Some folks get a lot of, get, go to school, maybe get a grad degree or whatever, um, but they're, you know, just burdened, overwhelmingly burdened with um, student loan debt, uh, can't buy a home, different things like that. So there's just a lot of uptick. So a lot of people are like, why would I, if I'm going to have to pay all these loans back, if I'm going to have to do all this, I'm going to have to do that. Why would I be in a job that's actually not going to value me for me as a human being? And so that's a lot of what I'm seeing. A lot of a lot of that um, from my from my clients of like they're just over it, over over this idea because um, we we were sold something, it told something that is not true. <laughs> that's really not true um, in regards to what work is supposed to be and how work is supposed to be in our lives. And after we're locked up for three years, you know what I'm saying, and can't. Um, uh, we're not able to do all the things that we wanted. Like we want to experience the world. Like yeah. why would we wait, you know, till we're, we retire if we're able to retire, right. Um, to travel, to do all these things. We want to do that. Like right now, why can't we do it right now? Um, and so that's a lot of the things that I'm hearing with, with my clients and I'm, I'm, it's so fun to walk through them, walk through that and reframing things and unlearning things and navigating that process with them. And good for you and good for the millennials. You know, I have a couple teenagers at home and I'm listening to a lot of the dialogue and seeing how it's unfolding. So I, I grew up in the 90s it was a part mm -hmm. of the Gen X thing. And we yeah, were one yeah. of the generations that said, you know what? We're not doing this antiquated thing that you guys did. All right. We're mm -hmm. not waiting around for a 401k that's been crashing and burning when the market goes down. We're not going to wait to do these things. There was this self-preservation of taking care of travel when you wanted to do it. Have yep. a family and kids when you felt like you were ready to do it and do some things for you. But you guys, the millennials are taking it a step further. You're opening businesses. You're, you're like carpe diem on steroids. You guys are going yeah. after things. And I love seeing that. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it was always uh, talking to my mom. She always let me know, like she was not surprised when I started my own business. Um, she was very, very unsurprised um, because I've just been really entrepreneurially minded since I was a kid. Um and not because like I want to make a lot of money. Like I found out too through COVID that like I'm actually not motivated by money. You know, I turned down a raise of like significant amount of money um, because like I was like, I don't want to work with these clients. I don't want to commute that far. Uh, why would I actually work that hard for you and make you a lot of money? Why would why not just do it for myself? Right. Um, and there's other people that are like doing side hustles, having, you know, side businesses, being coaches, doing consulting work, you know, creating jewelry, clothes, all these different things that they're, they're crafting um, and not having it to be, you know, full time. And part of that is out of necessity, right? But there's also a part of that, another part of that that's out of this unfulfilled need, this unfulfilled desire to be creative, to um, tap into something else, right? Um, another thing that, you know, that I, that I talk to my clients about um, is that like you human beings are very complicated people, right? And so like, you don't have to just pigeonhole yourself into just this one thing, right? Yeah. You could just, you could be a teacher, right? But like, you're also, you know, um, a spouse, a partner, you're probably a former college athlete, you're all these different things. So why not try? Like you can try to do those things. That's why when I talk about what I do, I'm not only like a career transition coach, but I'm an organizational psychologist. I am a podcast host. There's there's so many different facets to me. I'm a ba basketball fan. I love, love basketball. And so like infusing these different things and parts of myself into the work that I do and everything that I do um, is another way that I'm like showing my authenticity, uh, my creativity, like the complexity of who I am as a human being. And that's the kind of work that I even, you know, I'm seeing with millennials, but I think Gen Z is are even going to take it further than I. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, as far as like the work, I know Gen Z, I know a few Gen Z is that already have like full blown businesses. It's it's incredible, truly. Yeah. So let's boil down exactly what you do on a daily basis. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's career day. One of the yeah. kids says, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I help, I, I support people in experiencing career joy. Um, and career joy, as I define it, is this internalized like happiness, longstanding happiness in what you do. Um, whether you're trained, whether you're, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It's that that your career, what you do for work, is something that like you get this internalized piece about. Um, and I help people like navigate that um, and experience that fully um, in whatever role or job that they want to do.
So let's go back to where you were born and raised. And what were these seeds that were put into you to not only help people, but mm -hmm. to be as diversified as you are and what you do and your interest level? I love that. So what's interesting is that my, um, so my mom uh, had me when she was 15. So teenage, teenage parent and growing up, uh, my mom like is a hustler, like hustle, 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 hustle. Um, and I just, I just always remember my mom working. Um, but one of the things that she did for me and my brothers always, um, it doesn't matter. Like I wasn't able to go to college, but you will go to college. <laughs> like that is something that you're absolutely going to do. You're, um, uh, and she always just instilled in us one, this belief that like you can go further and longer and be better and have more than I ever had. Um, and like encouraged and instilled this belief in us and also told us that we literally could do anything when we set our mind to like, there was nothing, not our skin color, not, you know, money, not whatever. Nobody can tell you that you can't do something. Yeah. The only, the only way that you know that you can't do something is if you tried it and you just couldn't do it. Right. And she always told us that we could. And so, um, and she always gave us this freedom to like test things out, explore like who we are, um, we didn't just listen to like one example is we didn't just listen to one type of music. My mom played like classical music. She played like rock alternative. Like she always played this and she was so um, really intentional about us being eclectic. So I think just having that, like those kind of like ideas and concepts like planted in my mind at the beginning, it's like, all right, like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to try stuff. Yeah. And that, I see my mom just doing stuff, all the, like just trying stuff, arts and craft, all these different things. Um, and so I think my mom would just see us do stuff and just like empowered us to do it. Um, and that's where that's, that's basically where it started. Um, yeah, for me. So who's been a hero for you in your life? Oh, gosh, my mom. Honestly, my mom is like, a, it feels like a cliche uh, answer, but my mom truly is, is, is one of my, my heroes. I think, um, I think when I, I think about just not just the sacrifice, not just being like a teen parent, but like, I think what she's gone through and what she's experienced in like her outlook on life um, and how she continues to treat people with kindness, treat people with respect, human dignity. And it was just a few months ago that I realized like, that is not just, that's a, that's like a value that I have, like community, um, equity, like those are values of mine that were like passed down from my mom and her mom and stuff like that. So she would be a hero of mine for sure. Um, and then LeVar Burton. I just love LeVar Burton so much. Like if I, there's people that come into, that I've experienced in my life and I'd be like, if I saw this person in real life, like I would like cry. <laughs> like I would just be a little kid. I would just be a little kid. Like I remember reading Rainbow. You know, I remember Star Trek because my grandpa, huge Star Trek fan. Um, I listen to his podcast now. Like I'm just a gigantic um, LeVar Burton fan. He's just legitimately a hero of mine. Um and he really, he was one of those figures that got me into um, reading. And I still love, love, love reading um, to this day. What would you ask him? What would be the one or two things that if you had the chance to ask him a few questions, what would you want to know? Hmm. What would I want to know? I think... One of the, one of the, one of the questions I ask is what... What inspire what inspires you um about reading? Like what inspires you? Like when you pick up a book, when you see an author, when you're reading these things, like what inspires you? What big takeaways do you have out of out of these things? Um another question would be is like what like significant and impactful ways have you changed over the years? Like you've done so many different things, but like through the through line is like this reading, this like um you know, sci-fi, these, all these different things that he's done. There's this through line of just like growing and changing. So like, what, what, what would he call like the biggest, like most impactful change that he's had in his life? I would love to, love to know that. So what was the first book you read that really opened the gateway up for you that made you love reading? Hmm. It was BFG by Roald Dahl. Okay. Um, it was like, uh, I don't know why that book was so impactful to me, but I think it was a book that like, all right, my I, I said earlier that my mom didn't tell me like can't a lot, but like she was so concerned about the like bad grammar in that book <laughs> that she's like, it's gonna mess him up. Um, but like I could not put that book down. Like I just loved the the flow of it, the almost like 
mysticism in it and there was this like giant uh who like was a runt among other giants but like he was always he just tried to do the big the right thing all the time and despite anything he was facing anything he was experiencing from the other giants and being bullied all like that he just was like trying to do the right thing and i just like i don't know i resonated with that and that, that's kind of like how i try to live my life is like i don't care I, I don't care if i'm the only person like screaming into the darkness that like that's not right or y'all need to stop or whatever like stop bullying or whatever but i think that 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 is like a really really impactful book for me i i absolutely love that book to this day i, I even love the movie i me and my wife went and saw it <laughs> nice yeah. so what is the motivation for you every day what gets you out of bed what gets you to accomplish what you want to get done and to help people what's that motivation hmm, that's a good question I think when I have, I have, um, before I just had such a hard time. I don't know what, at what point it happened, but like I would get in, up in the morning and I wouldn't even look at the mirror because I, I just didn't like what I saw. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, uh, believe in that person. I didn't look at that person and was like, I didn't see any confidence, any like understanding of self, nothing. And and over, like I mentioned, over the last three years, probably for me, last five or six years, like I have done, I just started asking myself questions like, who is Jonathan? Who does Jonathan want to be? Um, and I ultimately said, I want to be somebody who like knows who they are. I want to be somebody who is confident. I want to be somebody who believes in themselves. And I want to try. I want to, I want to do that. Um, and at one point, I lost my joy. I think that that's what it distills down to. Um, and so... I I am in a significantly better place now. And I get up every single day um, with this deep inward peace about who I am and who I'm growing to be. Um, and this joy uh, that I have um, in the work that I do um, with the people that I'm surrounded by, um, even though the world is like really, really difficult and so, so hard right now, I am like, I just like am encouraged by like the people that I run into um, on a daily basis. And so- what motivates me is like helping and supporting people get there. Like those light bulb moments where like folks like say like, no, I can't do that. And then I'm like, yes, you can. And then they tell me like, they, when they finally do that thing. Like I remember I have a client who the first call was a chemistry call. We were just vibe checking. And she was like, said, I'm unhirable. Like I am not hireable. Nobody's going to hire me. I can't do anything. And now she runs like a whole, a whole department raising funds for a nonprofit. Like, you yes. know what I'm saying? I, I love that. I love that transformation for people to like that, um, re-empowering them to believe in themselves again. So that's what, that's what gets me up in the morning. So a part of what you do is you're an advice whisperer. You're helping people. You're giving them good advice. What's the best advice that you've ever gotten? Uh, don't stop growing is like something that I, it just feels so so cliche, but but we're in such a polarized world, particularly the U.S. That like folks go to their corners. Like when you say something that like you might that ruffles your feathers or it's against what you what you believe or your perspective or what you know, um, folks want to go to their corners and dig in and not actually ask an additional question about where does that come from? Why do you you know why do you believe that? What where what you know have you heard of this before? Right? Um, and I think. I have held on to that belief of like, I just got to like always learn. And that, that uh, goes into like my interactions with clients, interactions with people that I meet um, on a day-to-day -day basis to always, always learn, always, always be willing to listen, always, always be willing to like change my mind, change my perspective. Cause I don't know anything, everything, you know um, I have a very small view of what the world is um, uh, even though I've traveled a lot, it doesn't mean I know more than anybody else. Um, and so even me as a, as a coach, as a consultant, um, my, my greatest tools that I think I have is like my ability to ask powerful questions and try and like help folks uncover the knowledge and brilliance that rely, that lies within themselves. Um, and if they need a little bit extra help, I'll, I'll give them that like direction, but I'm really somebody who just points out a different perspective for folks. So if you could see one event in human history with your own eyes, be there to see it and witness it, what would you love to have seen happen? Hmm. That is a really good question. Hmm. 
I think I would want to. So if I'm going with my serious answer, because I feel like I have heard it, I've seen it. I would want to um, actually hold on. I'm going to sit on that for just another second. What is sure. what is an event? There's so much fun that's happened. There's so there's many so things much fun. Down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Honestly, I think there's like there is like um there's the series between Larry Bird and Magic uh, Magic Johnson. I would want to go yeah. see that. I want to yeah. see that live and in person cuz they would just go back and forth. Like I would just yeah. want to watch a whole season of them just battling it out. Um because they just have such mad respect for each other and yeah. they would just they would just go to go to yeah. go to war. Yeah. Um yeah, and I'm a humongous Boston Celtics fan, so okay. I would have loved to see that um in real in real in real time yeah absolutely 100 yeah. percent. actually that's final answer that's <laughs> final it. answer joe i love it <laughs> i love it so everyone out there has a perception of you family friends clients colleagues but you run the show what's mm. your perception of you who do you think you are um mm, that's a good question as well i am somebody who i love to laugh but i but I think sometimes I may use laughter as like a potentially a mask of like what I'm actually feeling or to pass over some hard feelings or hard feelings that I'm feeling or hard, hard things that are going on. Um, I like to believe that I'm able to actually my perception of myself, I'm going to say that more definitively, that I am somebody who can sit in the like difficult, hard, messy things. Um and navigate it with a level head, um, kindness, gentleness, compassion, um, but also insert humor into that. Um, there's nothing wrong with smiling. There's nothing wrong with laughing. Like joy is another like value of mine. But I think that there is a, I don't know. I think for, for men in particular, that there is kind of like this idea that we don't feel pain or don't hurt or can't be sad. Um, and I just don't think that that's all always true. So as much as I'm willing to laugh and maybe even be angry or upset. Um, I also want to be somebody and I have the perception of myself that I could sit in the messy and the hard things um, and just allow people to to be themselves um, fully. Yeah. So if anyone out there wants to hire you, reach out to you, learn more about you, where's the best place to go? Absolutely. You can reach out to me on my website at heyjonathandumas.com. That is J-O- hey, H- hey, H-E-Y. J O N A T H A N D as in dog, U M as in Matthew, A as in Apple, S as in Sam.com. Or you can hit me up on LinkedIn. I am most active um, on LinkedIn um, there. Same same name, same initials, Jonathan L. Duma. Uh, you can find me there. Um, but that's how folks get in touch with me, work with me, um, want to chat. I love having um, conversations. It's always fun. Jonathan, this has been great, man. Thank you so much for your story. Thanks for your energy, your passion, and best of luck with everything. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you. Yes, sir. Take care.